Nisam Bulafiji. This is an animated video created to help communities better understand why our fish are getting smaller and fewer in numbers and what we can do together to better meet our food and income needs from the sea. So let's meet Mesake. Mesake is a fisherman from the village. <coughs> Mbula Mesake. You, Mbula. Mesake learned to fish as a child from his father, as his father did before him. Unlike his grandfather and even his father, Mesake needs a lot more fish. Is Mesake really, really hmm? hungry? No, Mesake just has lots of needs, more than his father did and a lot more than his grandfather did. Is Mesake asking for too much? <laughs> we don't think so. As you might expect, that means Mesake needs lots of fish. But Mesake is ready for a hard day's work. Go get him, Mesake. Here's the thing. Mesake today is catching less fish and smaller fish than his father did. And a lot less and a lot smaller fish than his grandfather did. Mesake is also spending longer in the water to catch the same amount of fish he did just a few years ago. And he is traveling farther and farther from his village. Isa Mesake. But that's one big ocean and it must have endless fish for Mesake to feed his family, meet his obligations and earn some cold hard cash, right? <laughs> We're glad you asked, as Fiji has developed and gained more access to such things as healthcare and access to relatively inexpensive foods, our population has grown. Yes, we are making more babies and living longer. That means a lot more people eating fish. And as Fiji has developed, our access to goods and services has grown. All of that requires more money. That's why Mesake and fishermen across Fiji are fishing more <laughs> and more to feed more people and to pay more bills. But for Mesake, he has more opportunities to sell fish than ever before. With the help of ice and refrigerators and roads and ships and airplanes and a network of buyers in Fiji and beyond, he can send fish to towns and resorts and to urban areas like Nandi and Suva and to far away markets. That's good news, right? A guy in the village should have a chance to make a living and provide for his family. But here's the thing, all of that increased need and increased access to markets has meant a lot more fishing. That's why fishermen across Fiji are having a harder and harder time catching fish and getting smaller and smaller fish. Right, Mesake? Hmm. Wait, Mesake, there is some good news. Hmm? Once you understand why our fish are declining, there are simple things we can do to make sure our villagers can catch more fish. So, how do you know if your village reefs are being overfished? Just ask fishermen if they are spending more time to catch the same amount of fish and going further and further to catch them. Or even if you are not a fisherman, have you noted if the fish you are eating are getting smaller? What about the ones at the market? Odds are the answer to all these questions are yes. Because the fishermen we've talked to tell us it's getting harder to catch fish all over Fiji. Besides being able to breed, fish also need places to live. Unlike what you might expect, fish won't thrive anywhere in the ocean. Everything in the sea we like to eat needs a different kind of place to live. Take Kawakawa and Donu. They like to live on coral reefs. So do parrotfish. Sea cucumbers like to live in seagrass. So do white spotted rabbit fish. Yellow goatfish like sandy bottoms. Mangrove crabs like mangroves and river mouths. Some even like to live in different places at different ages. Take the mangrove red snapper or mangrove jack. When it's young, it lives in mangrove areas. As the fish gets bigger, they move out onto the reef. Everything in the sea thrives in different places. So for fish and critters, without these places to live, we will have less of them, regardless of how much we are fishing. And if we are fishing heavily, without good places to live, our fish disappear even faster. Most of the time, it's how we are using the land and sea that's the problem. For example, if we are clearing too much mangrove areas for firewood, building materials, and for space to build homes, we are potentially hurting our fish populations as they lose places they need to thrive. We can also cause too much soil to run off into the sea when we burn land or deforest large areas. Or when we use lots of fertilizer or even just our human waste or animal waste, it can run into the rivers and sea and harm our coral that provides homes for fish. 
Sometimes the way we fish can cause harm too. In some places, people have used, and some still do, dynamite to catch fish. Others use the nduva root, which poisons fish. The problem with those fishing methods is that you kill a lot of fish you did not even want, which are food for the fish you do want. You also destroy the places fish need to live. It's like burning down a forest to catch a bird. Oh. Wait, wait, Mesake, there's hope. Now that we can know the things we are doing to decrease our fish populations, we can fix it. All we have to do is sit down and talk with each other. That's not so hard, is it? So first, a community must discuss what's causing its fish to decline. Talk about how life has changed and what changes have occurred in your community. Once you know that, there are some tried and true methods to take action. Most often for a Fiji community, the best approach almost always involves the community first working together to establish rules around fishing. In Fiji, there are more than 450 villages who are doing just that, right now, working together as part of the Fiji Locally Managed Marine Area Network. In Fiji, a village can limit the amount of fish it permits people to fish in its ingolingoli each year. That way you limit the amount of fish taken and have a better chance to leave enough fish in the sea to replenish the reefs. Perhaps your village can start by ensuring people from the village being able to get enough fish and limiting outsiders if the village fishermen are struggling. Or you can limit the gear being used. Some nets, particularly small mesh sizes, for example, can end up catching and killing a lot of sea life unintentionally. Even if it's sea life we don't eat, they often help support the things we do like to eat. Some places have also banned things like spear fishing, using scuba diving gear as it allows people to take too many fish too quickly and can leave too few fish to provide fish for next year. Some fishing practices like dynamite fishing or nduva root fishing can be banned because they cause too much long-term damage. Communities can also establish minimum sizes that ensure the fish is getting big enough to breed and replenish the reef before they catch it. Because just like us, fish need time to reach an age where they can reproduce. Communities have also begun protecting the places and times that fish breed. Take Kawakawa and Donu. Some communities have started protecting the places these fish spawn to ensure they release their eggs each year. Or they have begun to ban the fishing of certain fish during these spawning months. Communities have also established a tambu area where no fishing is allowed. Traditionally, these were established around cultural events such as the passing of a chief and ran for 100 days. But communities today have typically established them for longer durations and in some cases, they are established as permanent no-take zones which are the best way to boost fish populations long term as it lets all the fish get big enough to breed and keep breeding regularly. Here's how tambus work. A community establishes an area of reef where no fishing will take place to give fish a break and allow them to recover from overfishing. That way the fish get a chance to grow bigger and breed. As they do, the fish in the tambu area increase. And if designed properly, communities also start to see spillover of fish into fished areas. Communities throughout Fiji have seen both the fish populations increase and have seen species that were thought to be gone come back. Some villages have also established rules for land use, like banning or limiting mangrove clearing to preserve important habitat, or banning burning as it causes too much sediment to run off the land into the sea, which smothers reefs. Places have also taken simple but important steps, like making sure all their garbage does not end up on the reef, or limiting the use of things like herbicides or fertilizers that, if overused, can run off onto reefs and kill coral. There are awareness materials available and also government agencies and NGOs that might be able to help. Visit your provincial office or contact the Fiji Locally Managed Marine Area Network to learn more. But remember, the first step is to start talking about what you learned today with your family, other fishermen, community leaders, youth and women's groups. We have to get everyone involved and together we can make a plan to ensure you have fish for today and tomorrow. Once you do get organized, it will be a lot easier to find help. And it can start with this video and a simple question.
Are we having a harder time catching fish today? Whatever you do, make sure you start today to make sure the Fiji we grew up in is the Fiji our children can grow old in. So Mesake, what do you think? Will you start talking to your family and friends about fisheries management? <coughs> <Yo>. <laughs> oh, sir. Off you go, Mesake. Okay.